Mate, I'm thinking straight out of here and then just, once we hit that rocky knob at the yeah. bottom there, yeah. just, just straight up north along the base. Yeah. I've marked it all, mate, so I can keep track of where we're going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I mean, leave that to you. It's going to be tough. I think, I think it will be. To the northwest of the million acre property that comprises Lorella Springs is a mountain range called the Yinti Mountain Range. Now, the eastern side of that is pretty much uncharted. Up until about the uh, mid 1800s, no one had been out there except, of course, the Aboriginals living in the area. A chap by the name of Ludwig Leichhardt walked up the base of it on his way to the Roper River and always on the way to Darwin. No one's been there since, especially in a four wheel drive. We're going to be the very first people to get out and check out the eastern side of the Yinti Range. And what's really drawing us to that is that on the western side, there are several rock pools and gorges that blow you away. The opposite side, which is some 17 and a half kilometres to the other side of the mountain range, uncharted, hasn't been seen since Leichhardt walked up there on that very famous mission of his in around 1844. So we are going to be in the footsteps of Leichhardt, mate, which I reckon personally is extremely exciting. Yeah. Double-edged sword, of course. I'm a little bit concerned because we're making our own tracks. There's yep. no obviously tracks out there. We've got to, we just don't know what to expect. There's no. thick trees, we can see yep. that for a fact. Yep. There's yep. river crossings, there's all sorts of stuff. But if you don't go, you'll never know. That's exactly right, mate. Standing here is not going to do that. Let's fire him up and get you on You go and mount that thing in there. I'll see if Shorty turns on. <laughs> Let's go and check out You're the Hindi Mountain Range. Lorella Springs is located in the northwest of the Gulf of Carpentaria in the Northern Territory. The closest community is Borrelula, which is about 250 kilometres away, and to the south, Cape Crawford, which is about 150 kilometres away. It's one of the most remote places in Australia. It's a million acres, bigger than the size of the ACT, and most of it is completely untouched. It's an adventure's paradise. After a good night camped up at the homestead at Lorella Springs, we spent the morning thoroughly going over our vehicles as we were going to one of the most remote and untouched parts of Australia and everything needed to be perfect. Up front we had Graham leading the way in Shorty. Next was myself in the Dirty 30 towing a Mars Spirit camper trailer. And I've got to say, the 30 is performing better than ever at the moment. And last but not least, we got Stew Dog in the wholesale automatic GUU. This is going to be a real test for Stu's truck because he picked it literally up from the showroom floor, decked it out at Wholesale Automatics just before driving straight up to the NT. With less than 5,000 kilometres on the dash of the big GU, this is certainly one heck of a way to run the old girl in. Where is this turn off? After speaking with Rhett, the owner of the Lorella Springs station the night before, we figured out a few GPS marks of satellite images, which is going to be our best guide to head off the public track and into the unknown. There's termite mounds everywhere through here. Let's watch that termite mound in the middle there, mate. If you hit a termite mound front on with your bull bar, well, you're not going to even notice it. But if I hit one with my wheel, well, that could cause a whole lot of other problems. So you've really just got to be on the guard out here and watch underneath this grass for anything that might just pop up. What we're looking for is a track that veered off to the right of the public road out to the Yindi Ranges. It was a track that Rhett put back maybe a year ago and travelled about 100, 150 metres into the bush before turning around again. And that was going to be the start of our adventure. From then on, we're going to be on our own. I've got to say, this has got to be it here. This, it's perfectly where it should be on the map. Yeah, believe it or not, lads, this little uh, indentation in the grass is our track. Yeah, right, thank you. <laughs> Let the adventure begin. You could tell straight away that this terrain was unforgiving. It was hardly a track at all. There was just trees everywhere and we needed to really forge our own path. Oh, that's a tight fit. It's just, this is just mentally exhausting. You're really thinking about every single place you put your tyres. Towing a big camper trailer through terrain as thick as this is certainly one heck of a challenge, but I'll tell you what, it'll be certainly worth it when I get to camp. And I was just thinking to myself though, you know, towing this trailer, a lot of people probably think, you know, why on earth would you be towing a trailer through this sort of terrain? But number one, of course, is to put the trailer to the test, but two and more importantly, that we've got a lot of supplies in this trailer. I've got about 200 litres of water in the trailer and um, a bunch of other supplies and spares and all the food and another fridge and I've got everything in here. Yeah, you really are our mobile base station, you are. I'm trying to follow Graham's tracks, but if he goes too tight, well, I'm just going to make my own tracks and just sort of plough down a few of the smaller trees. I'm looking for trees that are sort of sapling smaller than sort of the A sort of thickness and line them up with your chassis rails and just push them over. And it's 101 track building. The payoff is 
is I'll have a camper trailer. Some very remote bush camps. How yeah, is it right up the back of you? Pretty clear. I'm more worried about punches on broken trees. On this trip we have to be super careful about tyre placement because if you get it wrong, you drive over a broken sapling, you could potentially damage the sidewall of your tyre. And this is not the sort of place you want to do tyre damage. This is one of the first creek crossings of the trip and when you get to these sort of creek crossings it's really hard to tell what sort of terrain is under all that grass. Our plan was quite simple, it was to follow north along the Yinti ranges as close as we could but we didn't know what to expect except for the odd creek, big rock steps and of course really thick vegetation. I suppose this is the whole draw card of why we like coming to places like this, we really don't know what to expect and that's half the fun. What's that in front of us? Is that, is that rocks? Yeah mate, that is, uh, that is the tail end, the southern tail end of the Yinti mountain range. So, Literally, we're gonna, it's almost like a spear point. It comes down at such a sharp angle here. We're going to go around it and start heading north, mate. My research leads me to believe, and please don't hold me to this because it could be completely wrong, that once we get on the other side of this, the eastern side of this range, and start heading north, it should clear up considerably. Oh mate, I am, I am going to hold to this, I'm sorry. If it does, I'll be stoked. Lads, we've got a, uh, well, it's actually quite a, quite a little creek here. You wouldn't think anything of it if it had a track over it already, but it doesn't. When you come up to little creek crossings, even small ones just like this, you really don't know what to expect because they're so overgrown with vegetation. It's literally one of those moments where you put your front tyres in and just hope for the best. Yeah, trouble is you can't tell what's going on until you're in here. This is where a short wheelbase vehicle really comes into its own. A good approach and a good departure angle is perfect. A little creek crossing just like this. Looking at Graham go through this creek crossing, I knew just from the angles he was on that this is going to be one heck of a mission for the Dirty 30 towing a camper trailer. It's really bad, eh? Yeah, I'm, I'm just sitting in a creek, mate. Two, two ends of the chassis are touching the bank, and I'm going nowhere. There you go. Looks like I'm going nowhere. Both chassis rails are hung up on the bank, and both tyres are off the ground. I think I might need to use a winch for this one. Ah, yes. Yes, I see the problem. It's going to be a very simple recovery. I'm just going to hook him up to Shorty, because we haven't got any. Ah, oh, not a bad anchor over there we could have used, I suppose. But Shorty's in the right spot, so we'll just hook him up to the back of me pull him on through. We're just going to have to watch that trailer because I reckon that could give us some grief but we'll see how we go. Yeah with a bit more momentum I could have had this but of course I would risk doing damage to the camper trailer. So it was out with the winch and I'll get out of here quick smart. <laughs> I love this stuff. As you can see, Stu is just idling through this creek crossing, which is making it look really easy. I suppose you can put that down to the automatic gearbox, which just allows you to tackle obstacles really slowly and really carefully. Denser in front, so I might take your spot on left here for the camper trailer. Check out that wood in the middle, it's even a fire pit, mate. Home is where you park it. As the sun went down, we reflected on today's journey and threw a few loinies on the campfire for dinner. We've, we've done a lot of this sort of bush bashing out at Lorella before, and this has been some of the best terrain yep. to drive. Without a An doubt. An uncharted track in my opinion. Without a doubt, yeah. So, Graham. Yes, mate. How, like, do you reckon we're on Ludwig's oh, have tra to be. trail we'd, right now? We'd have to be. In so much as that he came through here with horses, they can't take horses over rocky country. So 100 metres to our east is rocky country. Yeah. They wouldn't have gone too far from the range because this and is where the water is. There's water all yeah. through here, so. So they wouldn't have gone too far from the range. So I would guess, you know, 
you'd almost have to think a place like this, as open as this, they could have corralled horses in here. I'm going to say it, he could have camped here. Right here. That's so cool. It is cool. That's really cool. It's very cool. cool. I mean, it's very cool. I was never one for history at school. I, <laughs> probably the worst his, history student <laughs> going around. But, but these days, I think I appreciate a lot more, yeah. especially when I start to explore places in Australia. Yep. Especially the Australian explorers that, you know, I've got to take my hat off and I already have. <laughs> they named all the rivers that we've crossed. So they named the Worley Wancha, they named the Rose, they named all these rivers. Yep. yep. That was Leichhardt that did that. And obviously so, the Leichhardt River a bit further east. Exactly. That's a nice one. It was an early night tonight because tomorrow we had one heck of an adventure on the cards. It was to continue north and follow the Yinti Ranges and hopefully we might even find some swimming holes. I'd like a swim. Yeah, that'd be nice. It's 40 degrees every day out yep. here. Yep. No aircon, mate. Swim with Hashtag to Adela. <laughs> All right. So we get away fairly early. I think for now, though, we have dinner, a couple of coldies, and um, mm. yeah. There's something very special about waking up in a remote bush camp, especially when you get to tackle uncharted tracks for the day and head off under the unknown. Good morning mate. Yeah. Yeah, just you there. really don't know what to expect and I suppose that's half the fun. Second cup of coffee for this morning. And I'll tell you what, we'll need it too because we've got a big day planned. Our plan is to pretty much track around these mountains and keep exploring the unexplored, which is pretty exciting. First we'll get these coffees down us because it's going to be a massive day. I'm going to pack the camper up. That shouldn't take too long. And then we hit the tracks. After packing up camp, it was time to hit the tracks. Well, there's no tracks technically. We're sort of heading northeast. Actually, I might just follow Graham. That's probably the safest bet. Yeah, guys, we've got a very small creek crossing here. It's not got any water in it, of course. She's bone dry, but it's made up of, well, a lot of rocks. Rocks from the size of golf balls right through to 35-inch uh, tyres down here. What do you reckon? Just uh, crawl it? I've got a bit of a line in front of me. Oh, I've only got one rock I'm a bit concerned about, but I'm just going to crawl through in first gear and hope for the best, mate. I think you'd be okay following my line. This is the sort of terrain where you really have to pick your line. Getting it wrong could mean a big rock would hit your diff or even bend a steering arm. Slow and steady, first gear really is the key to this one. The terrain changes so much in this part of the world. The one minute you're going through dense scrubland and the next minute you're rock crawling through a dry riverbed. There's a few little diff clangers in there though. Definitely, definitely. Some bigger than diff clangers. There's <laughs> different movement. 4.6 diff gears in the Dirty 30 means that the final gear ratio is a lot lower, which allows me to tackle obstacles slower and carefully, and I'll do less damage. This sort of terrain is just so thick, but there's a lot of gaps between the trees, so what we're doing here is we're trying to keep as straight as we can, because after all, I'm towing a trailer. But we're able to sort of negotiate our way through these trees without causing any major damage. You seem to be dictated to by the bush through here, rather than the route that you want to take. I wanted to go left, then I couldn't, I had to go right. So I'm sort of following really what nature's putting down in front of me rather than with any respect to the mountain range, which is where I want to stay close to. The further we tracked along the Yinti Ranges, the more little creek crossings we came across. We sort of found that all the runoff from the mountain range would of course come down via little rocky creek beds. So it was a mixture of dense scrub and big rocks. It was one heck of a challenge. This is where an off-road hitch really helps. Got some big angles. How you looking, Shorty? And yeah, that trailer's just following through now, mate. <laughs> I'll tell you what, modern technology, mate. Off-road hitches and polybot couplings are worth their weight in gold. Stew with the automatic transmission can really negotiate these rocks slowly, which is what you want to do if you want to avoid damage. So much easier doing that in an auto than it is a manual, and not to mention safer. 
I think a lot of people are going to think we're crazy driving through. They're not tracks like virgin bushland like this, but there's something very rewarding about pushing your own track through to be the first four-wheel drive to have driven right here. It's pretty special. Look, one day this path will be opened up and other people will be able to experience this drive. But it takes a bunch of crazy people to come out here in their four-wheel drives and, and actually create a track through here. Lost the track. One of the things you quickly find about driving through dense bushland is if you're only like 15, 20 metres away from the vehicle in front of you, you can actually lose sight of them altogether and you can't even see their wheel marks. But I suppose at the end of the day, this is an untouched paradise. This part of the country is not a bad place to be lost. I've just steered us directly at this beautiful little river here. As you can see, it's just crystal clear, flowing through here. And I reckon I'm going to take advantage of this right now, jump in and have a quick dip. It's not deep enough to swim in, but I'm going to lay in there because that's going to be beautiful. What do you reckon, mate? You keen for a swim? That's actually quite nice. That's a beautiful little body of water. When we're experiencing temperatures of upwards of 40 degrees every single day, and especially having no air con, when we found a little bit of water, it was very rewarding. We couldn't help ourselves but stop and get out and take a bit of a bath. Come on you two, get out of there, hurry up. Now we could have stayed in here all day. It was absolutely beautiful, but we had tracks to explore and Graham was cracking the whip. <laughs> oh, I'll meet you up there, mate, you're right. A lot of unknowns here. Let's try it out and see what happens, I suppose. And what we didn't notice that after that first creek crossing, there was actually a second creek crossing just after it. Now that's one of the problems with driving through creek sort of country. There's a lot of dense bushland and finding an exit, well, it's almost impossible. It's a steep old entry, that is. The creek bank was very, very steep, so the plan was to drive down the creek a little bit so we could find somewhere to exit and hopefully get back on track. With second gear and a lot of right foot, I'm able to get the Dirty 30 up over the exit to the creek and then carefully negotiate the camper trailer through so I don't do any damage. Can you watch the car, Sean? Camper trailer's wanting to go down as I wanted to go up, so I'll have to give another go. just as we thought we're coming up to a dry creek bed. The problem with this one in particular was the sand at the bottom was super, super soft. So getting any sort of traction to get up over the bank was gonna be an issue. Exit's pretty steep. You got to get into it, Probably doesn't want to follow, mate. <laughs> now the plan's to reverse down and give it another go. But of course, as I start to reverse, the trailer starts to jackknife. Well, that's as far back as I'm going to get. I'm going to have to hit second low and give it everything she's got. Well, that's as far as I'm going to get in my own steam. So close. I might have to get that winch out. Why well, you pay for a winch? That's exactly right, mate. If you operate that, I'll do this bit. With a little winch and a little bit of driving, I was up and out of the creek and ready for the next challenge. All around me here, the ground is littered with boulders. And they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger as, as we go up into the mountain range. Makes sense, it's a mountain range, this is obviously where it's starting to weather. And these boulders are like the, uh, the foothills, if you will, of this mountain range. And it's just going to get to a point, I feel, where it's just not feasible for us to continue anymore. But I'm going to try and pick my way along as best I can. See if we can get there. 
Yep, Graham was right. The further we tracked along this mountain range, and the closer we got to the valley, the tougher it was becoming. Big rocks were everywhere, and we really needed to pick our line. Trying to pick a track through this kind of terrain for all the vehicles and the camper trailer to go through was just like trying to thread a bit of cotton through a needle. This is going to be our toughest challenge yet. Oh, it's going to be hell. After throwing around ideas like calling it quits for the day, admitting defeat and even turning around, we found one option where you might be able to get through this creek crossing and through to the other side. It was really going to be one of those cross your fingers and toe moments and hope for the best. Would you have a go at Shorty bouncing around like that? I'm not sure if it's a terrain or it's just Shorty, but heck, this is one tough challenge. Can I just get a spot through this section here? Of course, the big challenge here is getting hung up on big bowlers. As soon as they hit your diff, you're not going anywhere in a hurry. That sucks! <laughs> That's the rock that was under his diff. I think I've made a very definite pathway for you to follow there, guys. We're going a definite pathway, Shorty. The idea here was to follow Graham's track, of course, down through the creek. But that's going to be a lot easier said than done. The other thing I've really got to consider is those big rocks right in front of me. Hitting one of those with the camper trail on the back could cause all sorts of unseen damage. The front locker. Now it's not very usual that I use the front locker to go down a hill, but in this case, I'm using everything at my disposal. Now, there's a lot of noises and groans coming out of the Dirty 30, especially in terrain like this. There's rocks flicking up and hitting the underbody. If you listen very carefully, you can hear a very faint snap. Now that snap at the time, I thought was a rock flying up and hitting the underbody of the Dirty 30, but it was actually a lot more sinister than that. Second gear and a lot of go. Let's see if the 30 can do it. It was a bit like a hippo on roller skates. It was messy to watch, but you couldn't look away at the same time. God, I love that truck. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> with the trailer. <laughs> now, of course, Stu has the automatic transmission on his side to carefully negotiate these rocks. The thing he doesn't have on his side is he's got 33 inch tires and a lot less clearance than the Dirty 30. He's really gonna have to pick his line carefully through here. In this sort of terrain I really can't recommend highly enough the use of rock sliders and really good underbody protection. Oh, we're not getting back out this way. <laughs> no, we might have to start the quarter action head office from out here, <laughs> this side of the river, because we can't get back. Nice drive, Stu. You really made that look easy. Well done, mate. It doesn't look too bad through there. I think that's what we're looking at. That's tomorrow's destination, up there. After that challenge was done, it was time to find a clearing in the thick bush and make camp for the night. That's one of the things about driving virgin bushland like this. It's so stressful on both your vehicle and your mind because you're constantly trying to pick a path through where you can avoid damage and get through. But I tell you what, when you get to a place like this, at the end of the day, it's all worthwhile. While everyone was setting up camp and settling in for the day, I really wanted to do a little bit more exploring, but this time on foot. I wanted to climb to one of the highest ranges so I could get a good view of the valley and see what we're in for tomorrow. <coughs> Taking a bottle of water and a handheld GME radio for safety, my plan was to climb to the toppest peak so I could get the best view of the landscape. There is definitely a clear path. There's a clear track that we can take tomorrow. Look, I can only see as far as I can see and it looks pretty dense down the end there, but... I reckon we'll be able to drive almost to the base where the two mountains sort of reach down the bottom there. So, this is gold. Come in, come in, this is base camp. With base camp calling, it was time to get back down the mountain range, raid the Waco, and even cook up a camp feed. Okay, first things first, we're gonna boil some water up because we're gonna cook some rice. That's gonna go with our end of trip chili mints. That's about two cups. Now, I've been into the back of the Dirty 30, pulled out some cans that, yep, full of dust. They've been in there for a while. What we're gonna do here is heat this pan up. I'm gonna put a bit of olive oil in. And we're gonna get some onions fried first up. So, I've chopped some onions. A bit of... Ooh, 
you doing, mate? Cool. Not cool just yet. A little bit of rice. Where now, um, this is end of trip chili mince, mate, because we're, we're down to rations at the moment, mate. They really are. Look at this. Look at the top of that. Yeah, I know. That, that? That's been there for a while. I think it's got Simpson Desert dust on it. We're that's up. disgusting. Yeah. Is that still in bait? No, oh, don't, don't, don't read. Oh, don't read. Gee, this is the end of the trip. Look, mate, but trust me, it'll be good. Mate, I think you know what I can do for you right now that's going to make this all seem a lot better. What's that? Go and get your beer. Mate, if you could, that'd be great. So, what do we got here? Probably two cups. Two cups of rice. We're feeding a few blokes. You got a stubby holder? Yeah, I'll do something a little bit crazy. Ah, uh, don't, mate, but that'll do. I'll drink it fast enough. There you go. I'll put a little bit of onion in with the rice. Look at that. The heck? Yeah, the onion with the rice, mate. You're getting all gourmet on me. A little bit of bacon. All right, I'll put the mince straight in. You just want to brown all this sort of stuff up now. And then I'm going to add some seasoning, a bit of spice, all things nice, some tomato, and that'll just about do us. It's a real simple one, this one. All right, that mince is starting to brown up really nicely now. The bacon, the onion, the rice is even going pretty good too. But at the moment, we've just got plain Jane mince. So now, we got to add a few little spices. Now, I'm going to start off with a bit of slap your mother. This is really hot, this stuff. This is Stu got this one from some chilli festival in Melbourne. A little bit of chilli. Oh. Okay. Now got some chilli flakes. This is going to be quite warm. Alright, now a few herbs and spices. Mix herbs, that, that'll do. I don't know how this is going to go, but I found some paprika in there too, so I may as well put a bit of that. Here you go, mate. I'm taking your beer away from you because I don't think you're quite right in the head. <laughs> What's that? with all the chilli? This is, mate, look, dead set secret. It's an That's old... It's, it's a fair bit. Look, a lot I'm not going to lie room. to you, mate. I'm not going to lie to you. This is um, it's going to be a tasty little morsel. Tasty? If you can taste it, if your head hasn't exploded. I thought you liked the chilli. I do, mate. Nah, look, it's got a fair bit of chilli in there. It really mate. has. Do you want to put the passata in there? Yeah, yeah, put it in. Put it in. All, everything's got to go in now. Yeah? And the good news is we can always add a little bit more chilli. Chilli, should we need it? Yeah, we shouldn't. <laughs> Alright, you good? Yeah, chuck it in, mate. Sure. I'll make it well. They do it when they're building cakes. Try and get some in the pan. Yeah, I got most of it in there. I'm going to put the tomatoes in though if you could. Go easy because I don't know how big the pan is. Oh, do try not to splash. Just take it all, mate. Yeah, right. There you go. Chuck in some of those beans if you could now. Yeah? Yes, I can. I drain these myself. Hand drain. That is looking good. Well, we'll let that simmer now for about 15, 20 minutes. That'll reduce down and um, should be pretty nice, I reckon, when she's done. Well, that's a lot of chilli. We're going to have lunch tomorrow. Mmm. That is so good. There you go. End of trip. Chilli mince. Now, it's nice and hot. You can obviously put as much or as little chilli as you want. We well, actually went with a fair bit here. And that is about as good as it gets for raiding right the end of the Waco. Mmm. That is really good, man. Big fan. sausages for breakfast is about as good as it gets and you'll notice we're cooking up a heck of a lot more sausages because we plan to have some for lunch on cold sausage sandwiches. Who says you can't be comfortable when you're out in the bush? It's actually quite exciting really. We're going to leave a bit of a base camp here. Whether we return here tonight or not I'm not too sure but we're going to leave the base camp here, jump in the trucks and we're going to head up this gorge here and see how far we can get. Sean I went for a walk last night right up into the top of the escarpment country up here and he didn't bring back fantastic news. He reckons it's quite clear for a way and then it gets extremely thick not too far just up there and that was kind of my approximate idea as to what might happen but you don't know if you don't go so we're going to pack up jump in the trucks head up here and see how far we can go then probably head back through this way pick up the camper and make our way out all right i'm going to pop these in the fridge no no i'm not no i'm not because right here i've got the cook's privilege <laughs> trailer unhitched it was time to check over the vehicles once again to make sure everything was tied down properly and everything is in good order because today we got a feeling the going is going to get very tough. I'll try and crawl along it as best I can but it's pretty thick through here. It's got a bowl of food. If going by what I saw last night on the top of that escarpment meant anything, this was going to be the easiest part of the drive for today. 
which wasn't very comforting since it was pretty tough. It was only going to get harder from here. <laughs> that was a bit of fun. And it wasn't very long until we got to a creek with very, very steep sides. We began to question whether we made the right decision to follow along this valley at all. Trying to find somewhere to cross this river is quite difficult to do. And I'm also weighing up, I guess I'm weighing up the risk of tyre damage, body damage. And the thing that I want to check out, if you want to see it from here, pinnacle there, yeah. there's a pinnacle of rock over there. I wouldn't mind driving up to that. <laughs> we'll sit on top and get some answers. <laughs> we'll, ask, we'll ask for answers. After we made the sensible plan to turn around and not risk any more damage to vehicles, we thought we'd go back to the base camp, we would assess everything and come up with a new plan. Oh, that's a bit of a bummer. We can't go that way. It's just too thick, too much of a risk to the trucks, doing more damage, tyres, etc, etc. So, there comes a point when you've got to call it, and I think that point is right now for us, and we're going to hook the trailer up, backtrack out of here. Now, on the way in, we saw a couple of large rock features that we're very keen to check out in more detail, maybe climb to the top of them and get a view of this big valley that we've been in. And from here, we're going to track back out. There's a couple of rock pools on this side that we have a swim at. Hopefully, we're going to cross around to the other side of this range, where we've been told there are two or three, maybe even four, rock pools of the sort that you would see on postcards. I am stoked to go and try and find those and go for a well-earned swim. For now, we're going to pack up, get out of here. But of course, before we could get to those swimming holes or even to that vantage rock point, we first had to get back through that creek that caused us so many dramas the day before. One of the best tips I can give for travelling terrain like this is to often try and get as high as you can to a vantage point where you can have a good look at the terrain. In this sort of flat country you only have to go up about 10 to 15 metres before you get a good look at the landscape and really make your plans from there. I don't reckon too many people have stood on this little pinnacle mate. No, I reckon. Zero I'd yeah, say. Yeah I'd say zero. Zero. Yep. Which is, you can't say that in many places in the world. So what do you say, the plan is now mate, hook around the rest of these mountains, we get a pretty good view where you can see exactly where we need to go. Yeah. Up around these mountains. Yeah. And then try and find some of those water holes. Alright, I'm gonna get off this. Yep. And bust a move. What do you say? Fire up the chariot. Let's do it. Kinda got that double creek crossing coming up here, lads. So the exit on the opposite side was quite steep coming in. Won't have changed. Yeah. Copy mate, I'll um, wait till you get through so I might hit a little bit of momentum. Up and out of this creek bed, lockers on in the rear. Just crawl on out. Got a laugh, Shorty. I don't think something's right with the vehicle. It doesn't seem to be in full wheel drive properly. That is problematic. After driving so many hundred thousand kilometres in that vehicle, you really get to know it quite well. And I could tell straight away that something wasn't right with four wheel drive. I only had two wheel drive, maybe three wheel drive at best. What do you want to do, bud? I want to winch this one just so I don't do any damage. Yeah, Roger, I'll jump out and give you a hand. No real problem here. I reckon Sean I almost could have driven that, but we're in a situation now where Risking doing damage to the vehicles just isn't worthwhile. So Sean's taken the sensible option and decided to winch here. I think that's the only way to go personally. Nah, something's definitely not right here. When I get the Dirty 30 back onto the flat ground, I can really have a good look around the vehicle and actually try and diagnose what the problem is. It was a big noise, I don't know what that was. Well, I think I've done an axle. Actually, I'm 100% certain I've done an axle on this one. And um, I know that because as I was coming through some of the softer sections of sand, I really started to feel it bogged down in the rear end. So to test it out, I um, unlocked the front hubs, put in two-wheel drive, and I had zero drive, I wasn't going anywhere. 
put the rear locker on, then I had drive. So that tells me that one of the axles is buggered, it's not the diff. The broken axle was no doubt caused yesterday when I heard that big crack. One of the really good things about old Land Cruisers, in my opinion, is that they're very easy to work on. The other really cool thing, especially when you do have a broken axle, is they have full floating axles in the rear. So pulling the axle out to inspect really does only take about five minutes. And the other good thing about an old Cruiser, heck, I sound like a bit of a broken record here, but you can drive with only one rear axle. Of course, just pop it out, put a rag in there, and drive on your merry way. Boys, this is it, western side of the Yinti Ranges. This is uh, one of Rhett's more popular. It's actually only been open for a very short period of time, but already it's making a mark for itself on Morella. This is one of his more favorite water holes. So uh, I figured it's a fitting spot to go and have one last little swim before we head back, eh? Yeah, mate, I'll tell you what. Oh, I definitely need it. Sorry, you need too short, I've got windows down. A little rock step here, lads. Nothing too severe. It is a little loose, but there is traction there. You might be all right, mate. There we go, mate. Two drive action. Here we go. As you can see here, only front wheel drive with one ton of camper trailer on the back. There's no way the dirty 30 was going to get up here under its own steam. Put him on help to be Yeah, I might just winch this, mate. I can't do it with the trailer on the back unless we put on the shoes. Last little pinch to reveal one of Rhett's favourite water holes. It's all worthwhile. Love this stuff. Despite not being able to drive this little rock step on my own steam, there was nothing that was going to stop me or the rest of the group getting up to those water holes and experience one of the best parts of the Gulf for ourselves. We've travelled too far to stop now. It's due straight into it and by the speed he's going up this rock step, you can tell he really wants to get to that water hole. And here we are, an absolute paradise. It's actually hard to believe that something so beautiful, something like this little oasis right here, could even exist in such a harsh landscape. And that's one of the things you'll find around Lorella Springs, that Rhett's made tracks to a lot of little hidden paradises all around the property, probably about 50 in total, that you can go and get out of the heat, explore some of the best parts of the Gulf Country that you won't find anywhere else in Australia. We didn't waste any time and jump straight in. <laughs> Graham, have you been trying out the Olympics, mate? Because that looks like a 10 out of 10 bomb. Graham's gone for the high board. I've gone for the short board. And Stu, ooh, he's just doing laps. How good is this, eh? Mate, paradise. Absolute paradise. Well, I reckon we can call this mission an absolute success. From driving in the footsteps of old Leichhardt himself around the eastern boundary and the western boundary of the Yinti Range to swimming right here in one of Rhett's prized Borella Springs rock pools. You know, Rhett's got about, what, another dozen of these? Oh, easy, yeah. Easy, another yeah. dozen of these. We found a couple out there. Nothing to match this, of course. We would have really written our names in the history books if we'd found one of these things. But I don't think that we could have done it any better. I loved it out there. And if you ever get up to Borella Springs, and I urge all of you to do so, Get out to the other side of the Yinti Range and have a look at it. We've put the track in out there now, although she's a little bit rugged in places. I dare say it'll be a proper <laughs> track though. Yeah, it will be. A few more people go down it. Definitely will be. We should name it one day. <laughs> we'll name it the Yinti Eastern Boundary Track. That's too long. <laughs> Forget it. Just get out there and have a drive of it, folks. We'll see you next time on... Cool Drive Action. Catch you then. I'm going backwards on the water. Yep. For more on this adventure and to find out all the details you didn't see on camera, read Graham's article in the magazine and believe me, you'll want to know this stuff. If you enjoyed this DVD, and I bet you did, don't forget that every episode of Full Drive Action is now available to download in HD in our massive online library. There's over 100 episodes available for your viewing pleasure.
Also, if you want to keep up to date with Full Drive action, then make sure you head over to our Facebook page, give it a like and you'll find heaps of videos, epic pictures, competitions and heaps more. Get involved, you won't regret it.